Well, good morning. Um, welcome to week three uh, of uh, our transition. Again, we want to thank the people of the state of Louisiana for giving us the honor uh, to be able to serve them uh, starting on January the 8th. And again, I know that there is still remains a lot of excitement out there and a lot of people are eager for us uh, to get going. I would also remind you that there's still an election uh, to be had. Early voting is going on right now through um, this coming Friday. And then of course, election day is November the 18th. But I also want to continue to emphasize that we still have time. Uh, because remember, we could be still in a runoff and we would not be even starting this process uh, until after November 18th. Uh, and so again, we're, we're trying to take a very methodical process uh, because we wanna ensure that we get it right and we wanna make sure that we get as much information to the public as possible. So today, we're gonna do two things, two major updates. We are going to announce the Commissioner of Administration and the Deputy Commissioner of Administration. And so a lot of folks out there may ask, well, why is this so critical? Why make this appointment and this announcement first? Well, first of all, I would venture to say uh, that the Commission of Administration is probably, the Commission is probably one of the most important jobs in state government. It is an absolute critical position because the person that we appoint to be the commissioner, then the person who's the deputy commissioner, and then the people that they will appoint underneath them basically run the financial affairs of the state. So the commissioner is like the chief financial officer of the state. The administration and, and is responsible for drafting an annual state budget. And so the commissioner presides over, in addition to drafting that budget and then the legislature passing that budget, they then preside over the spending of all of that money. So they are responsible for counting the pennies and the dollars in, all, in every state department of the state, every state agency on a day-to-day -day basis. So all of the spending goes through, is gonna go through these gentlemen. And of course it is through the commission of, the commission of administration and his office that efficiencies, savings, and the streamlining of government can happen because they see it at 50,000 feet. And so this is where protecting the taxpayer starts. And that's why we wanted to start here. The division also oversees the Office of Risk Management. It supervises the maintenance of state buildings and lands, procures federal grants, and administers state work hours amongst many other vital tasks. So today I'm going to announce the new commissioner of administration who will be Taylor Barra. Taylor is currently serving as the assessor in Iberia Parish, but prior to his election to assessor, many of you in the press would recognize him because he served as the speaker of the Louisiana House from 2016 to 2020. This is important because having a former Speaker of the House who is willing to serve under our administration, I believe is very important because he knows state government and he knows the budget process inside and out. Because remember, HB1 starts in the House, so all appropriations start in the House. So he will be an incredible asset, not only to us, but I believe he'll be an asset to the legislature as well as we work through the appropriation process. In addition, Taylor has over 40 years of experience in the banking sector, which is also important because he plays a vital role with the treasurer on the bond commission. During his time in the Louisiana legislature, he was also a member of Ways and Means, of the Ways and Means Committee, and authored many key pieces of legislation that were directed towards fiscal reform and improved tax policy. Next, I would like to announce that Patrick Goldsmith will be the Deputy Commissioner of Administration. And quite frankly, I think that this is an unbelievable, unique team. Because Patrick served a 20-year 
28-year career in the Louisiana legislature, and most recently served as the chief financial officer and then the chief administrative officer for Ascension Parish. So when he left the legislature, he went over and worked in local government uh, and cleaned the books up there. <clears throat> he spent 19 years with the legislative auditor as a performance auditor and nine years as the fiscal director for the Louisiana House of Representatives. Prior to working for the House, he was the director of performance and auditing and actuarial services for the Louisiana Legislators Auditor's Office as well. And so placing someone with his experience and understanding how the budget is built and writing the budget next to someone like Taylor, who's had to usher that budget process through the legislature, I think is an unbelievable winning team. And I have no doubt that these two men will be able to find efficiencies and savings in our government so that we can streamline the government so that it can better serve the taxpayers. These two men are going to be tasked with ensuring that the state is fiscally responsible and responsive to our citizens. Uh, and so again, I think that this is why we chose to announce them first, uh, because again, they gotta get to work too, because the, the budget um, uh, has to be put together and before the legislature soon. 90 days. 90 days. <laughs> and so um, again, I wanna thank you all for coming and certainly we'll open it up to a few questions. The, uh, the toughest part of that decision, and for those of you that know, um, 25 years ago, the predecessor uh, in the assessor's office that led two times before I got there was my father. So um, a little emotional decision when I made the decision to, uh, to join Jeff's team. But for those of you that have gotten to know the governor-elect, um, you know, passion is probably an understatement. And the passion that he has for Louisiana is infectious. And, and you know, it was tough when you're term limited, especially when you're term limited after four years of being speaker to walk away from state government cold turkey when you feel like there's still a lot left to do. Um, that was the attractiveness to me. Uh, to, and when I had been talking with Jeff, I picked on him and said, you know, you need to go get elected first. So the Sunday after uh, the election, he called me and said, okay, I did my part. Now you and I need to talk. So uh, here we are. Um, great question, Greg. Um, looking forward to it. Um, I leave my assessor's office back in Iberia Parish in good hands. Um, and I feel like I can certainly help Iberia Parish and the state of Louisiana in this role, uh, maybe a little more than I could as the assessor, but uh, a tough decision, but good question. Governor-elect, um, this appointment kind of continues the tradition of you know, having lawmakers and in some recent cases, the House speakers lead the division. Um, what are the advantages of having a, a kind of an experienced lawmaker atop the division of administration? Look, you know, it's a, it's a great question because when we first started um, uh, discussing this position with the transition committee. Um, <clears throat> of course, the stakeholders that we have on side of that, inside of that transition committee are a lot of business folks. And they're like, well, if we're going to get a CFO, should we do like a, a, a na national search? Here's what I will tell you. If you don't understand the workings of the legislature and the budget process, which I will tell you is most likely overcomplicated, OK, um, you and, and, and you haven't been exposed to that environment. It will literally eat you. OK. And so I think that one of the reasons that you see that uh, you see uh, governors lean on legislators who have been there and certainly in, in leadership positions like Taylor um, is because of that. I also believe, though, the uniqueness of, of, of this situation gives us both someone who's been elected, had to be responsive to constituents, and knows how to count votes with someone who continued to have to take the calls of legislators in either trying to put money into the appropriations process or take it out. Uh, so I, I think that this gives us a great advantage in doing some of the things that we promised, right? Because in order for us to, to continue to focus on the three things that we promise the people of the state, which are crime, education, and economy, we are going to have to streamline this government. This government is gonna to have to operate 
in the 21st century. Uh, and when you look at the structure and you look at the budget, uh, I think that we can do a better job. We can be better stewards of taxpayer money. And I can think of no two people um, who I would want to embark upon that process more than with these two gentlemen. These two men are the reason that I chose them uh, is to hope in hopes of being able to smoothen out the budget process. Look, I believe that this legislature <clears throat> that is going to be seated, uh, you know, if you look at the composite of it right now, if you look at the new members that have been elected and those that potentially are going to be elected on November 18th, because election day is November 18th coming up, um, <clears throat> that those uh, legislators, I believe, share the same vision of trying to streamline the government and making sure that we're bringing the necessary services to the taxpayers with the least burden on them. Yeah, and, and what I'll add to that, of course, the substance of the budget being the most important, but I think as you as you work through the, the Finance Committee on the Senate side and the Appropriations Committee on the House side, um, getting to those members, a lot of which will be new-termed members, um, with this first executive budget, I think there will be a good bit of opportunity for us to do some pre-education as to what will be in that executive budget for their benefit. That helps with, with understanding the budget. It is, you know, 20 sections that are amazingly in-depth, and it's overwhelming to some of that legislative team, even if you're an experienced legislator, legislator and first time on the Appropriations Committee. That can be as well. So I, I think transparency in the budget is key. There's no reason for us not to be able to explain everything that's in there and why. Um, I think once you do that and the legislators have a good understanding of that, it certainly makes the process. Can't take 100% of the politics out, but they will have a transparent budget in front of them, no doubt. That's why we got him and him, <laughs> because they know how to turn that budget around. Uh, you know, the great thing, I mean, again, if you go back through Patrick's uh, experience in his bio, um, he could probably turn this budget around at night in his dreams, okay, because he has lived it and breathed it. Um, I think that when they, I, I want to first give them an opportunity to go through that budget, um, and then we'll be visiting with them, and then we'll set those priorities. So that question is probably a bit premature, but we hope to answer it in, in the near future once these both of these gentlemen have an opportunity to get their footing. And there's time for one more question. Okay. Yes, uh, so I remember last week uh, you were uh, saying that uh, you feel like New Orleans could be uh, run a little bit better. And um, you, you were saying that uh, you, uh, you think it should be ran like Nashville. So um, as, after saying that, um, do you plan to speak with uh, American Trail and city council members about how the state can help the city? Absolutely. Look, I've spoken to, I know for sure, one city council member already. Um, we are still in the transition phase. Uh, I've got a transition committee solely focused on trying to identify concerns um, and uh, impediments uh, that keep the city of New Orleans from looking like Nashville or Charleston, maybe not running like them. But again, it's all about appearances um, and the way that that city functions. Uh, and so, um, so I want to let that commission, um, that committee do its business, and then we'll be visiting with those leaders. Uh, I, I think that it's probably a bit premature for us to visit with them yet, but we are working on a plan. Look, I like to go visit with someone, like the mayor or any of those city council members, when I have a solution to the problems as we see it. Uh, I don't know anyone, including them, that's gonna, that believes that the city of New Orleans is being run like an absolute professional football team, okay? I mean, we know based upon the statistics that the city has some major problems. We wanna be able to identify those problems because you can't come up or offer solutions until you've accurately identified the problem. Uh, so we intend to work with them and anyone else who wants to help us uh, fix the city of New Orleans and the state of Louisiana. So I appreciate it. Um, thank you for your time. And um, I'm guessing we'll see y'all next week.